Hi, this is CAD CAM Lessons channel. In this video, I will show you how to start using Bamboo Studio and how to prepare machining programs for the Creality Ender 3S1 Pro printer. First, we will start by adding the Ender 3S1 Pro printer. To do this, we click this button and here we search for the Ender printer. We have Creality printers here and we select the Ender 3S1 Pro printer then we click Confirm. The Creality Ender 3S1 Pro printer will appear in the list and we choose this printer to prepare the machining program for it. And now one more important thing. Click this button and here we go to the printer settings. By default, the start code doesn't include the command to initiate auto-leveling. If you want the auto-leveling to be activated before each print, add the G29 command after the G28 code. This way, the printer will initiate auto-leveling before every print. We click this icon to save these changes, and we can save it as a copy. And that's all for now regarding printer settings. We won't change the other parameters. Close this window. And now we will move on to the filament. You can add here the filaments you use. We do this with the plus button. If you want to remove a filament, you do that with the minus button. Here we specify the material we are printing with. To add materials for printing, we click this button. And here we choose the filaments we are using. I have selected only generic PLA and generic PETG filaments so that I can use general settings for these filaments. I am currently using PLA filament and PETG filament. I do not use many other filaments and don't need other filaments to be on the list, so I only selected these two filaments. These are general settings for this type of filaments, and these settings should work as base settings for most filaments of this type. These filaments are very flexible in terms of settings, and regardless of which filament manufacturer you use, these general settings should serve well as entry settings. I click Confirm here and I have these two filaments on the list. And here we choose whether we are using PLA or PETG. Let's select that we are using PLA. Here we can specify the color of this filament. Next, let's add a model based on which we will prepare the machining program. To do this, we click this icon and select the model based on which we will prepare the program and click Open. Here I am using the default settings and we have the model imported. This model was imported in black color, and when importing models, Bamboo defaults to setting the color and material for the first filament from the list, and the machining program will be generated for these settings for this filament. Here, if you click the three dots, you can edit the parameters of this material. However, these default parameters are quite okay. One thing to pay attention to is the printing temperature. Here we have the specified bed temperature. It is 60 degrees for the first layer and 60 degrees for the other layers. Here we have the printing temperature. We have 220 degrees for the first layer and 220 degrees for the other layers. This could be lowered a bit to 200 to 210 degrees. I will set it to 210 degrees here. For PLA, 220 degrees is a bit too much. The Ender 3S1 Pro doesn't print that fast, so we can use a slightly lower temperature to avoid overheating the PLA. And here another useful parameter might be this one. This is the parameter defining the material flow. If it seems that too much material is being supplied during the print, it looks like the material is overfed, we can slightly lower this parameter, and if there are gaps in the print, it seems that too little material is being supplied, we can increase this parameter. And here, if you hover the cursor over this window, information appears that this parameter should be in the range of 0.95 to 1.05, and we should move within such limits. If there is still something wrong with the material flow, it depends on other settings. For now, we will skip that and focus on temperature related parameters and the flow parameter. And okay, let's save these settings here too. And we close this window and here, as you can see, the preset has already changed. We have user settings and we can use those settings. 
So now let's move on to the parameter settings. Here the most important is the layer height. We have the first layer height and we have the heights of the other layers. Here, as you can see, we can expand the default presets and we just have layer 0.20 and 0.16. I suggest keeping this layer at 0.20 and regarding the first layer, 0.2 is a pretty good value, but for the other layers, we can increase that. We can even enter 0.28 here and that should also be okay. However, if you apply higher layer values for inclined or rounded elements, the print will simply be less accurate. This layer will be more visible on the object after printing, but in the case of functional elements, it should not matter much, and for such simple elements, it won't matter much either. But if you don't care about time, you can apply 0.2 layer value everywhere. And in this window, these parameters are the most important. Next, we have parameters defining line width. However, I would leave this default. I would also leave the other values default. For now, we don't need to focus on anything, we can leave it as it is. And I also left the default layer height. Next, we move on to the next tab. This parameter is quite important. We have the number of walls here. I will now go to the preview to see a print preview and observe how it looks. Here we have two outer walls. If I now increase the number of walls, for example, to four, I go to prepare, preview, and now we already have a larger number of walls. This affects the print's durability. If there are more walls, the print should be more robust. Next, we have the number of top solid layers and the number of bottom solid layers. Here I will slide to the bottom. We are just defining the number of bottom solid layers here and the number of top solid layers, as well as the way they will be performed, the type of pattern in which they will be printed. We can leave the default values, and in some cases, we can increase or decrease the number of bottom and top layers. Next, we have the parameter defining the infill percentage. Now it's set to 15%. I'll enter, for example, 25. I go to prepare preview and now this infill is more dense. Here we can change the infill pattern and then this infill will be printed differently. And here regarding this tab these parameters are the most important at the beginning. Regarding the other tabs in the speed tab I suggest not changing anything. In the support tab we can enable or disable supports. In this case, as you can see, we don't have any supports, so there is a risk that it will collapse. If we enable supports here, I'm not changing any values, just enabling supports, I go to preview. Supports have been generated here where there was air, and this facilitates printing such elements where there is no backing. And here, as you can see, we have two lines around the model. You can leave it, but if you would like to disable it, this is the skirt loops parameter. And here we can turn it off, set to zero lines, and then there will be no lines around the model. But generally, this parameter can be useful. You can think of it as lines to run before starting the print, just to push some filament through the nozzle to equalize the pressure. And we can leave it that way. And now, when it comes to supports, in some cases we can avoid these supports, because just like here we have this model, and something like this we can print in a different orientation. We can rotate the model, we can do this in such a way that we select the model, click this icon, lay on face, and we can select for example this face to lay the model on this face. But we can also use regular rotations. We select the model, and here we choose the rotate command and here we define the rotations. Here we can rotate the model, for example, around the x-axis. I will rotate it now by 180 degrees, and we are back to what it was before. Now here I will rotate it by 180 degrees, and this model is laid down. Now, for example, I will rotate around the z-axis by 90, and this model has been turned in this direction. And OK. Now, if we print this model in such a way, we can print it without supports. And so, here we have already set parameters. We can check how it will look. 
Here we have information about the print time. I will change the parameters a bit, disable the supports here, and go to this tab. I will reduce the number of walls to two, and the number of top layers to three, and the number of bottom layers to three. I will also change the infill method to grid, and set the infill to 15%. And now I go to prepare, preview, to see how it will look, and here you can already see that the print time has significantly shortened. To print something like this, we click export g-code file here, and now after clicking this button, you can save the program on a memory card, and run the program on the printer.